O oh God, the strength of all who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers, and because in our weakness we can do nothing without you, give us the help of your grace, that in keeping your commandments we may please you both in will and deed. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Tomorrow is Valentine's Day, a day that we celebrate and romanticize love. It is a day for flowers and fancy dinners. For me, it is a day that often brings to mind people who I love but no longer see, like my granny or my dear friend Bridget. People who were gifts in my life, but who now see God face to face. Tomorrow is a day of love and hope, but how do we find hope in the midst of so much loss and grief and disappointment? Even though COVID cases are down, 10,000 Arkansans have died of COVID. So when I read our gospel this week that Jesus said, blessed are you who weep and mourn for one day you shall laugh, it felt a little like a punch in the gut. How do we look for hope in the midst of pain and loss? How do we find joy in our grief and our pain? How do we continue to love one another when we are exhausted and stressed from each new challenge that is placed upon us? Friends, our lives have been forever changed. Our routines have changed, our jobs have changed, everyone and everything has changed. And everyone has been touched by loss. And the very people who we rely upon to care for us and pick us up when we are down are worn out and grieving too. Many of us feel like we've been treading water for the last two years and frankly, we are exhausted. Everyone is grieving something. So where do we find hope in the midst of loss? Where do we find love in the midst of grief? And then it hit me. Whenever I am feeling grief, I am feeling love. Because grief is a part of love. We grieve because we love. We grieve because someone we love is no longer with us. We grieve for the words never spoken. We grieve for dreams unfulfilled. We grieve for all the shoulda, woulda, and couldas. The if onlys. If only I had visited sooner. If only I had driven her home. If only I could change my place with him. But if only will not heal us just like asking why, will never help us out of a dark place. Asking why will never help us heal. Asking why keeps us trapped. Asking why keeps us stuck in the past. Asking why keeps us looking back into the dark abyss. But what? What is a question we can do something with? What can I do today to honor my beloved? What would they want me to do with my life now? What is something new I could try? What can I do today to take care of myself? What can I do to love someone else? What can I do to walk with someone else who is in their grief without trying to fix it or change it or minimize it? but to be there with them through their grief. Asking what gives you hope and moves you forward. So what good things come out of loss? Tears make room for joy. Tears open us up and wash away sorrow to make room for new joy in our heart. The 23rd Psalm famously says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. But listen closely. Yea, though I walk through the valley. Through the valley. This means I don't stay in the valley forever. This means I am not stuck in grief 
or mired in quicksand. Because I am moving through grief, we are all moving through grief. And then the psalm continues, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. The shadow of death. For there to be a shadow cast, there must first be light. There is always light, even in the darkest times. And that light is Jesus. The light always follows the darkness, and there is the hope. The extreme hope for me and for you is that the light always follows the darkness, and it will always be there. The good news is that we do not have to walk through pain and grief alone. Jesus loves us and understands grief. Jesus wept with Mary and Martha at the death of Lazarus. Jesus knows grief, and Jesus is with us in our grief. We are never alone. Because even in darkness, we have the hand of Jesus holding you and holding me. Jesus is holding us when we can't hold it together. The good news is that we do not have to do this thing called life, this thing called grief alone. We have God and we have one another. And we can give up trying to do it all and be it all and allow ourselves the time to grieve to allow ourselves the time to cry, to get angry, to be frustrated, because God can handle it, and God can handle us. Imagine instead of trying to reach out and find God's hand, that God has already reached out and is holding your hand right now. When you are too tired and you let go of God's hand, God is still there holding you. When you are too tired to walk, God will carry you through. When you are in your darkest hour, the sun will still rise again every morning. Even when you cannot think you can get through it, you can and you will because God is with you. And because you have 100% successful track record for getting through the difficult things that life throws at you. The arms of Jesus are there to hold and comfort you, to shine light in the darkness. The good news is that even though you may weep and mourn today, one day you shall laugh. One day, maybe even today, you will find fun and spontaneity and joy. One day soon, you will breathe deep breaths without worrying about catching COVID or giving it to someone. You'll breathe in and out and in and out and be unafraid to breathe and laugh. Even though we have lost people we love, we never lost Jesus. Even though there have been hard times when we couldn't hold or touch or be with those we love, we could still touch and be touched by Jesus. It may be the only arms that you have are the arms of Jesus. The only touch you may have is the holy water or the communion wafer or the hymnal or the Bible or the book of common prayer. But know this, Christ himself is with us always and forever. When it seems as though you have lost everything, your ability to touch, your freedom to move about and be with people, you still have Jesus. And yes, we are all changed. Life has changed, but how has it changed for good? What positive things have come out of this horrible COVID? Has your relationship with God gotten stronger? How has God been working in your life and in your heart? How have you changed for good? And what brings you joy in spite of your tears? I find joy in simple things in watching my dog, Buddy, wiggle on his back and beg for a belly rub. I find joy and peace when I hold the hand of someone I love, when I talk with a friend on the phone, when I share a simple meal. I find peace in watching the sun rise in the morning and watching it set in the evening and watching the stars come out at night and the moon shines until a new day begins. 
I find peace in knowing that Christ is always just one breath away. And I feel peace when I breathe in the love of Christ and breathe out the worry. In breathing in the peace of Christ and breathing out the pain. With each breath in, Christ fills me and with each exhale, I am released and the grief and the pain are released. With each breath in, I am filled with the light of Christ and with each breath out, I let go of the darkness. A couple of weeks ago, 1 Corinthians came up in our lectionary. Love is patient, love is kind, love is not envious or boastful or rude or arrogant. It does not insist on its own way. It is not resentful or irritable. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Love never ends. And now faith, hope, and love abide, these three, and the greatest of these is love. And that is where grief comes in. We still love when the person we love is gone, because love never ends. But we can endure all things. In your darkest hour, remember that God loves you. God is with you, and God is holding you safely in loving hands, embracing you in loving arms. Blessed are you who weep and mourn. God is with you. The light is with you and the darkness shall not overcome you. Today you may weep, but one day very soon you shall laugh. Amen. May God give you the grace not to sell yourself short. Grace to risk something big for something good. Grace to remember that the world is now too dangerous for anything but too truth and too small for anything but love. So may God take your minds and think through them. May God take your lips and speak through them. And may God take your hearts and set them on fire in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And God bless you.